state your fear and then directly correspond it with a, a saying by saying but and then say the positive statement that is overcoming that fear so if you would say oh i, I don't know if i'll be able to um, support myself in a salary or i won't oh there'll be a gap of this but if i quit my job and i find something better within a few months i will feel fulfilled and i'll be able to do this I'll be able to uh, reach a new level here. Or if, oh, I, I, I might not be able to because of a gap on my CV, but maybe that's not important to the employer who I can really flourish in. And maybe a gap in my CV can be well justified to allow me to explore something more fulfilling. So I'm going to get you into your breakout rooms. So Katie, you can help me. Take it in turns to make your statement, describe your fear, and then add the but. We like the but and then put your statement straight after, which is how you would overcome that. What is the alternative narrative to accepting the fear as it is to create a positive, radical, optimistic mindset, um, which is part of the problem, right? Because we believe our fears, but there's always an alternative. Um, so Katie, if you don't mind, if you could um, uh, pop people into breakout rooms of three, I'll give you 15 minutes, so roughly five minutes each to go round in your um, group. So one person say your statement, say your but sentence, and then the, the way of overcoming it, and then move on to the next person and keep going around. Do you have any questions? Wow, everyone understands me so well. I feel very good about myself. Um, Katie, could you um, place people into breakout rooms of three, please? Uh, yeah, you should get a invite in a second. Um, how long do we have? Uh, we'll do 15 minutes so I can, I'll put the exercise in the chat, Louise. That's, that's absolutely fair and, and true. I will do that. Cool. Uh, one second. All right, let's go. See you in 15 minutes. Good luck, people. And that should be everyone. Hello, welcome back to our realities. Um, well, but I mean, before we move on to something else, I'd quite like to take five minutes to gain a little insight into to how that experience was for some of you. So um, we're all open and, and friends here who would like to maybe tell us a bit of how, how they found that, if that was useful, if it wasn't useful, if they liked it, if they didn't, or just about what was discussed. Someone would like to give us some insight. Oh, someone does. Someone's got their hand up. Lloyd, is that right? I can't hear you though, Lloyd. Even though you're... Oh, and he's, he's unmuted, but I can't hear him. How's that work? You're going to have to mime it to us, and we're all going to have to, as a team, combine to understand you. It's the only way. I still can't hear you. Maybe right. Maybe uh, pop it, pop it in the chat. Maybe pop it in the chat. Lloyd will come back to you. Yeah. Okay. Nothing from Lloyd. Um, anyone else who would like to say something about how that experience was? Or just anything. You just. I'd be curious to hear how how you found the experience or what was discussed. If it if it was in, interesting, useful. Someone in here is going to do it. I know you all have some thoughts. There's no way it was silent for 50 okay, minutes. I can say something. There we go. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, um, it's it's nice to talk to, to someone about concerns that, that, that we are all mutually concerned about. But um, mm. it's also very strange because these are very vulnerable topics. And speaking to a complete stranger from mm. the very like, hi, I'm yeah. troubled financially. <laughs> it's yeah. quite, it's quite challenging. I, fi yeah. I found it quite challenging. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think it is. It certainly is a, a vulnerable space when we talk about fears of making changes, right? I think, but there's something comforting in sharing those fears and recognizing that we have a shared reality with others who experience the same things. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing that though. That's cool. Does anyone else have any? any I would like to say that it's really nice to be in some community with people who 
have the same kind of thoughts because once you're in the corporate environment and among friends who are like maybe happy in the corporations or whatever, mm. uh, it's just really hard to keep focus on what you want and feeling that it's actually acceptable to feel like this because yeah. you just feel like a complete alien. So for yeah. example, for, for me, for years, I felt like that. Someone's. Uh, yeah, thanks, Eva. That was that was good. I mean, that 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 is that reminds me of this of the same thing we were talking about before, which is um, it's about creating a shared reality amongst us to feel like we're not alone in our fears. Because often, if you're surrounded by a community immediately who uh, maybe they're all quite comfortable in their jobs, maybe they're all your friends are part of corporations and they're doing well, they're getting those paychecks, they're rising through the ranks, and maybe you don't feel those things it can feel quite isolating. That doesn't actually mean you're alone. It just means you're not yet involved in having those conversations in the other communities um, because there's plentiful people out there who are seeking to make more meaningful changes towards doing fulfilling stuff. It's just about finding those people and involving yourselves in these conversations like we're trying to do now, which is nice. Um, yes, thanks, Eva. That's, that's I should share. Um, I hope we all feel connected via our <laughs> disillusionment with the with the corporates um hard to swim against the water that's exactly it what a good metaphor we're all just swimming but we'll make our way there uh, does anyone else have any thoughts that they want to share and then we can move on but lloyd we're never going to get to hear from you i'm sure what you would have said would have been wonderful I'm sad that we're not all here to experience it. Um, cool, guys. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you got to that. I think, again, the I think the biggest barrier we face really is about overcoming the voice that we tell ourselves about the fears when we want to make a change in our lives and careers, right? I think there's so many reasons that we tell ourselves that we won't be able to survive or be good um, if we make that change. Um, but really, it's about... Uh, adopting a mindset which enables you to feel comfortable in discomfort, to feel like you are doing something worthwhile by choosing not to do something and choosing to do something else. That's really at the heart of this. And through these exercises, through vocalizing it, through having conversations, you begin to realize that you are in control of those fears and you can overcome them and it won't be as scary as you, as you think. But at the heart of it, to make these changes, to escape corporates, to find something more fulfilling, you do have to take action to make those shifts. And all we're doing is exploring how we can shift perspectives to allow us to do that. Um, cool, so I'm gonna do a quick visualization exercise with you and then we'll, we'll get chatting again because I just love it when we're all talking, so much fun. Um, so I'm gonna ask you all to, um, um, close your eyes with me, if you will. We're going to have two minutes. Have a nice, deep breath. We're not, not too spiritual, but we're just, you know, we're relaxing. Okay. So, imagine the year is 2022. It's March 2022. You were reflecting back on the year that you've had. It was around May time, well, let's call it June time, reflect back to June, when you actually handed in your notice to your current employer. How, how scary is that? You handed in your notice and you decided to escape a company that you were in. You decided to escape something in seeking something better. This happened in June. What are you now doing? How do you feel? You should feel a sense of pride imagine that you're now doing something more interesting more fulfilling maybe you're, you've now joined us a smaller startup or a new team maybe you've decided to finally launch that side project that you, you'd always wanted to maybe you've you tried a business maybe you started selling cupcakes and you found that really enjoyable whatever it is lean into that feeling from june you handed in your notice and you were free and you were vulnerable but there were other people around you who were doing the same thing. And you're feeling like you're starting afresh. You're on the path to do something more fulfilling and more meaningful to you. 
imagine what that looks like. What does that feel like? What kind of things are you doing in your day to day? Who are you doing that alongside? Feel that pride in your decision that you were bold and you were brave. And despite the reasons, the many reasons there are to choose stability, to choose security, you chose to take a leap and it worked. You are feeling more fulfilled as time passes and you feel like you are on a journey that is always changing, but you feel pride to make the change. It's March, 2022, you're looking back at the journey. What a journey that's been. And then you notice the things you're doing now, the people you're with. Okay. You may open your eyes. Now, what I'd love you all to do is essentially we're going to share those visualizations. So we're going to be almost role playing. You're going to be talking as if you are in March 2022. And in these groups, you're going to say, okay, I'm, I'm sat here now and yeah, I quit my job in, in June. I went on to um, start some side projects that I'd always thought about doing. I started working a little bit at the cafe to just cover my rent for a bit, but now I feel like I'm really building something. I've got a few friends on board and now I'm, I'm gathering a momentum. I made my first client sell and, and now i am really got lots of energy about what's to come. That's just an example. I don't know why I keep going back to cupcakes, but maybe that I should look into that myself. But Ahmad, so you are going to propose and share that visualization in these groups. You're all, each going to have maybe four or five minutes each to share your visualization with a bit of pride. This has already happened, right? So you're not saying, oh, I think I did this. It's This has happened. You're in March 2022 now. So you're looking back on what you have done and you are going to share the things that you have done and what you're now doing. Sound good? Does anyone have any questions? We're going to pop you into breakout rooms. You're going to go in threes and we're going to get all up it in these, with these visualizations. Um, cool. No, no questions. I don't think. Wow. I'm, I'm so good at explaining. Um, Katie, could you uh, place these lovely people into breakout rooms of three, please? I sure can. You'll have 15, well, maybe slightly less, 13 minutes. So you'll have four minutes each. Have, you have your time. That's your stage. You are delivering your visualization. Good luck all. Okay, rooms are open. Welcome back, hey. everybody. Welcome all. Um, you know what's coming. You know my question. I wanna, you'll all be thrilled to hear. I know I can speak for you all and saying that Lloyd, his microphone now works. I, how incredible is that? So, uh, I mean, I don't want to spotlight him too much, <laughs> but I do. I would like to hear some of your thoughts of how you found that experience in, in expressing your visualizations. I'll, I'll let it out to all, but Lloyd, if you do want to say something, you, you, you may. Okay, I feel like I just like have to test my equipment now. Yeah, but, uh, yeah um, my visualization was, it feels a bit stupid on reflection because it was very much if the pandemic wasn't going on and given it's like kind of a year since that was started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had, I, in one year time, I have a very free life. I'm um, making money in kind of a passive way in a way which still helps people, but in a passive way. But when I wake up in the morning, I can be anywhere or I can just jump on a plane or go anywhere and work on whatever I want to. So mm. um, I think in the breakout room just now, I used the example of there was an earthquake in Croatia recently and I would have gone, right, I'm going to jump on a plane to Croatia and I'm going to go help the people there or something yeah. like that. So kind of um, stopping this corporate life where we're swapping our time for money, having money coming in, like not, I don't want to be rich, I just want to have enough money to survive and then do the things that I yeah, want, nice. if you get what I mean. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Laura. I, I mean, to me, that sounds like a big reason that lots of people look to make changes is to seek more freedom. 
to have more freedom in how you spend your time, how you have responsibilities. And it comes up in a lot of people's visualizations of that being a life that they want to allude to. So um, cool, man. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Um, do, does anyone else have any thoughts on, on like the, the exercise himself, how, how it felt to, to display that or anything? I know all your mics are working. I know it. Someone's I think maybe for, 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 for my pair, we were maybe not quite at the point where we were ready to offer visualizations, mm -hmm. but we had a great chat kind of helping each other to uh, probe where we might want to kind of put our creative energies yeah, nice. uh, going forward. Yeah, cool. That's an equally valuable thing, right? To just discuss and brainstorm on what would the changes be that you would make if you were to hand in your notice, which is essentially the aim of a visualization, right? Is to think in that space of what would I spend my time doing and what would I creatively fulfill? Cool. Thanks, kids. Um, so I, I know we only have a few minutes left, so I want to just leave you with a few yeah, I get like sort of tips in a way of like what is the actionable thing that you can do that can um, help get you to that point of being ready to escape something or change something to make that um, difference. And um, I kind of put it in two brackets. One, if you are choosing to join something else that is existing and the other being for if you want to start something yourself or start freelancing or creating a business or creating an idea or project, whatever, something like this. But the heart of the tip is doing something. To start with, if you're looking to maybe make a change into a new company the first thing that you can do is um try and make a connection try and make try and be introduced to someone who can who can give their insights into um their world and you can do that very proactively yourself if you use linkedin or you are aware of some companies that you quite like the look of if you don't mention that you're looking for a job and you just say hey i saw that you're background is this and you move from this company to this company I'd be super interested in having a conversation chase a little bit so find their email address find their email LinkedIn and reach out to them this is a very good way to feel a sense of security or by just having these conversations to actually tangibly start exploring what that might look like and what other companies do and how they do them and that's a really valuable thing to do and it's very simple and lots of people are very willing to give you that time if you don't just send them their, your CV blindly, but you say, hey, I saw, I'd liked your experience in this, that, and the other. I love that you did this. I love that you're interested in that. I am too. I'd love to just have a conversation about it. I guarantee like eight out of 10 people really like that on, and, and do respond on the second or third time you reach out. Don't expect it on the first. Have to chase. This is a very important factor when you want to get someone to connect with you. And don't worry about feeling like you're overstepping the mark or like that's okay we can just do that bravely um, and then the second thing a really simple step if you choose to like go freelance or create something is think what could I sell I'm going to use the cupcake analogy clearly that's on the top of my mind if I felt like that was something that I was really driven to do and I wasn't yet sure and there were lots of things I'm afraid of of surviving off of cupcakes the first thing I could do is bake some cupcakes and sell them I could try and introduce that to someone and experience the feeling of someone paying for something that I've created that at its very core is a really good place to start if you're looking to start something if it's a freelance business and it's consulting maybe you can offer that as a trial to a few friends and then see how that feels then you could maybe ask someone to pay for it see how that feels take action in that area it's a very simple first step, but it, and it doesn't mean you have to quit your job for it. You can do that right now. You can do that whilst you're still figuring stuff out, but you have to take those steps to actively explore it. Because if you don't, you'll never feel brave enough to really take that leap. You have to actively explore these things, make those connections, try sell something um, or trial something on someone. Those are the things I think I'd like you to think about in taking away and um, remember that there are multiple perspectives that you can look at to overcome these fears. The first step is to start taking action, to, to do something tangibly that will make you feel more comfortable doing it, and then at one point doing it. Um, and, you know, hopefully you've all seen the benefit this evening of uh, talking and meeting people who are going through the same thing, right? And 
Uprise serves that purpose. It's connecting those people who are trying to make transitions and start things to give a network of people to talk about this stuff and to share this stuff and to um, allow each other to shift perspectives and, and to give feedback on the ideas they're doing. But there are lots of communities and lots of ways you just have to be proactive. You have to seek out ways to make that change. But it can start with some actions that you can really do right now. Um, that was quite a lot of talking and on the dot um seven o'clock so how timely of me um i want to just i know i don't, don't want to hold you all too long but i would like to give the opportunity to see if anyone has any questions that they want to ask and i can do my best to ask them um and if not then we can all hand in our notices tomorrow and the unemployment rate can just go up slightly but we'll manage <laughs> i have a quick question Ooh. um just uh, how did you guys both uh, get connected to Uprise and figure out that's where you wanted to be in that process? Um, well, I actually followed the very advice that I just gave you, which is that I reached out to one of the co-founders who I just thought was cool and was doing a cool thing. And I emailed him, asked him, I referenced the stuff they were doing and I thought, and I wasn't necessarily looking for a job at the time. And we just became acquainted, 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 acquainted. Um, and then it's sort of one thing led to the other, but it came from a practice. I, I don't know about Katie, uh, I think. Um, how did I find Uprise? So I, uh, I was essentially like not happy at all in my job and looking for other things um, and kind of having escaped corporate myself, um, I kind of wanted to be in a place where I could help other people do that as well and help other people find jobs that they were really passionate about. Um, I think I found, I, I mean, I found my role on um, a jobs board and just applied. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go down Charlie's route um, and that was it, I'm now here. But I joined in April last year. So literally like just as the pandemic was happening, which was um, quite interesting. I've been looking at Charlie's face through, through Zoom for the past year. <laughs> how lucky how lucky you are um cool does anyone else have any questions thank you for the uh, question Amar. I'm just, uh... can i just ask um what sort of um businesses the students of uprise academy have gone into like what were their ideas or like what are yeah um very varied because it's not primarily about you having to create a business or develop a product or service. It's about what are the meaningful changes you want to make in your life. If that means you want to start, um, you know, there is someone who used one of the programs to create a flower business where she wanted to provide some flowers. You know, that is a meaningful change and she wanted to devote herself to it and, and she did it. Some other people are building larger startups and using this to scale it and to build a community around their, their businesses. Some people are using it to like you guys to make a transition into a new kind of job and they want to just be connected with other people so it's not specifically come here and create a brand new product or service it's come here to be uh, connected with like-minded people who yeah. all want to make meaningful changes in their lives and whether that means start a business move company um go freelance scale your company there's varying forms it's more connecting people who are wanting to make changes thank you Oh, good question. Thank you, Andrew. Um, do anyone else have any questions? I saw a, a fleeting hand, but maybe the hand has gone back down. I, I might have a little question, sorry, before we finish. Um, yeah. I was a little bit late and I just wanted to know when the recording might be available. If available. <laughs> I'm sure it will be, Katie. Do you know yes. Uh, yeah, I'm recording it. So I will put it up um, and send it out hopefully tomorrow, if not definitely by Friday. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Um, are there any more questions? I, I know I've gone four minutes over. I feel terrible about it. Um, but are there any last minute questions that we can answer in, in a minute? And then I will provide my closing statement. Wow, you all just get it, love it. Mm -hmm. um, cool, um, well guys, thank you um, so much for joining. Um, I hope this was 
somewhat useful for you to um, yeah, start thinking about um, how you might overcome some of these fears and recognize that there's always a statement that is radically optimistic to help you overcome that. I hope it's made you think about what is maybe an actionable thing you could do to help make that leap seem um, less severe by exploring making a contact or selling something um, or providing a trial service to someone. Um, and I hope you got to get a sense of being connected with some other people who are going through the same stuff and show that you're not alone if you're seeking to make changes and you're seeking to um, leave corporates and, and do something more fulfilling. And um, we need more people like you who are willing to make those changes and, and make those leaps. So um, I hope you don't feel too alone and you, and you, uh, you work towards those things. Um, but thank you so much for, for coming this evening. I enjoyed sharing this with you, this experience. And uh, hopefully I'll see some of you, uh, see some of you in the future in some more workshops. Definitely. Awesome. And uh, yeah, just to wrap up as well, if anyone is interested in finding more about what we do at Uprise, um, I will just pop the, I will try and pop the link in, uh, in the chat. There we go. Also, if you want to connect with me or Charlie on LinkedIn and shoot us any questions or anything, our LinkedIn's are here as well. So feel free to drop us a a connection and um hopefully we'll chat to you again cool thank you katie okay thanks all hope you have a lovely evening thank you for joining this fine wednesday thank you thanks guys thank you see ya really loving it right to the last moment they gotta stay in there and reveal those fears